Hello everybody and welcome to episode 16 of Fullcraft. In the last episode I mentioned we're gonna get vibrant capacitor banks and I set up the grains of infinity things and I've crafted the vibrant capacitor banks and we have put them inside where this crafting storage was. I moved the crafting storage up one higher and we're still waiting for some more vibrant capacitor banks. I ran out of uh, of the alloys here. Uh, it's currently making the vibrant alloy so I'm not really getting any input of energetic alloy but in time it'll build up and I'll craft the rest of these capacitor banks that I need to put in here. But we need to start using these as storage and not just have this energy cell as power storage for our storage system. So we're gonna go over to um, to where? To our spawners, yep. And we're gonna say, actually no, let's leave because this is gonna hurt us. Cow pet. Cow pet. There we go. Okay. Still gonna hurt. But we need nether star power to be going into here and we can set up here. Let's do, let's do it like so. Uh, flux point is gonna bring the power in. So we're gonna say that flux point nether star power. And then we're gonna set another flux plug here. And we're gonna say new network. And we're gonna say power out. And set this to, let's say green. Okay. Uh, and set this flux plug to power out. And currently another star power is powering this. We can turn take this guy off. Take that guy. Our refined storage turned off, but we're gonna say this power out. And this gonna should turn back on. We can take this wireless RF battery and toss it somewhere here, probably. Or we can just do it, do it down here where it was, or there, that's fine. And we can start configuring all of the flux points that I have permanently in the world. For example, this guy can be configured to be power out and all of the spawners need to be configured. So I'm gonna go around and configure all of these. Everything is reconfigured and renamed as you can see in here. And what we have now is from the nether star generator, we're putting power directly into this and then capacitor bank is outputting power to everything else. So we have an intermediary of 1.6 billion RF, I think would be the right word over here. So we can also set up here just to be safe. Uh, if I can get on the inside, we can set this guy to be output only and this guy to be input only, just to be safe. What I also did is I turned off the transfer limit on both of these, so we can <laughs> we can do ridiculous things like this. For example, this void or miner is producing ores this fast. Ignore the nether stars that's coming through, but it's like one ore every so often, like it's really neat, but I turn this off goes nuts. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> My god, but it burns 154,000 RF a tick, I think. So if we go up top here, you can see the output, 160,000 RF per tick now. So I don't think we're going to need to have the Voider Miner be this fast, so we can limit it to whatever we want to, but I'll just have it on 20,000 right now. Well, right now we're going to get rid of it, first of all, because we need to remove uh, this space to create space for the Nanobot beacon that I want to set up. And I have to go check how big this is because I need to put the uh, the thingy up at the right spot to get enough space to do it. I figured out where I wanna place this and we're gonna assemble it together here. I need to create the different types of modifiers that I want for this because you can get creative flight, night vision, saturation, and all that stuff. So we're gonna wait for this to build and then I'm gonna go craft some modifiers. So for the creative modifier, or creative flight modifier even, we need the flux infused jet plate. So I just went through like 15 minutes of crafting to get this again. So we can toss that in there and then we look at modifier. And here is the creative flight. I believe we have everything besides the jet plate, which it didn't put in, jet plate. There we go, creative flight modifier. And we need haste modifier. We can get that up to three. We're getting haste from this. So we might hold on to that, but uh, strength we can do. Let's do two. I think it goes up to two as much. Jump boost, I don't care about. Regen we can try. I think it goes up to two. So let's do f f uh, six of these. And let's do two of you. And then resistance. I only made enough for one because then we need the fire resistance as well. So I'm gonna see how, how high I can go for some stuff. But water breathing is only one. And invisibility, we don't really want. Night vision is good. And health boost, we can't get. Absorption, we can't get. Saturation, we can get two. So I'm going to make another set of golden carrots here. One, two, three, four. 
and saturation and then there's also glowing and luck and I don't know how high luck goes so we're gonna try that out we have two extra crafting tables or enchantment tables even so we can do that and see if there's two locks and then null modifiers we have 10 here as well uh, so we can just try and set this up so let's do uh, water breathing put it in here oh we have more space crew creative flight go in here um, I'm gonna do the ones that I know that are only one so night vision is gonna go here I don't know if this already starts working but we'll see uh, I think I need to fill in the null modifiers. So let's do this. Let's fill in all of it with null modifiers like so and I'm gonna fill them in on this side as well and then we're gonna test each individual thing. Okay, I moved it up one block. I don't think it should have been a problem, but um, I think I didn't have enough structure panels on the inside or something, but it's not working. I added fire resistance here and we're getting that. It's jumping between haste and fire resistance because this resets every five seconds and this one's resetting all the time. So we can now add the rest of the modifiers here. I'm gonna take them all out and the creative flight, just gonna put the, the ones that I really want up top here. So I'll do that. Fire resistance, I think we can get two of those, but we're gonna do night vision here, water breathing up here, and what else is only one of them? Fire resist probably, but let me set those up and I'll see what effects I can get. So the nano beacon is incredibly overpowered because we have all of these effects <laughs> and it's magical. We have night vision, water breathing, luck four, speed four, strength two, resistance four, regen two, haste three, fight resist two, and toughness. And for haste, I even I even put in haste modifiers, but I think we could get in maybe another fire resistance. I don't know if fire resistance can go higher. We can test that like right now. Oh, actually no. We don't need haste. Forgot about that. Saturation. And another saturation. Haha, -ha, we forgot about that. Okay, sweet. Resistance. I actually have uh, speed. We don't need structure balance, everything else. We don't need. Now, the ultimate test. I put this off. Creative flight. Nice. I go to the Mesa. That's the biggest part. I go to the Mesa with no angel ring, no nothing. And we should get all of the effects. We can fly. It's amazing. It's magical. We can fly anywhere in the world now if that is chunk loaded, which it is, because it's at the space station, which is chunk loaded. Magical. We can now say farewell to our meat feeders. They have served a good purpose, but this fluid transposer with the meat is no longer necessary, and we can put everything of the meat feeders into the storage system, and we never need it again because saturation. And our nutrition is going to stay at 100% because saturation will keep us fully healed all the time with regen and all that, and it's going to be wonderful. I have moved some things around. The nano beacon is up a little bit higher, so we need to remove this basalt that I tried putting in to make it nice and pretty, but it's not needed anymore. And I have three different ender chests here, one for each of the machines. So the resource miner is this fast, and it's insane. And I think the importer is going to keep up with it. Hopefully. If not, I have to limit the power, but I, it looks like it's not keeping up. Oh my God, I'm gonna need more importers. This is gonna be the resource, or the botanical miner. This is also nuts. How is this so fast? Why is this so fast? It's gonna fill my invent my system with all of this uh, untextured stuff, which we're gonna export in a trash can, but that's fine. This guy? Keeping up? I think it's keeping up. I'm not gonna raise the limits. Like it's using 20,000 RF or tech this one. I presume this one is using, yeah, 1929. So this is the fastest as it can go, I presume. And this is 1929. If I do ignore limit, are you gonna go faster? No, you're still doing 1929. You're doing 1929. If I ignore limit, 1929. Okay, so this is as fast as this can go. This guy is 15434. So if I ignore limit, it's going to use 154,000 RF attack and it's going to be probably faster than the importer or not because there's not that many ores actually. But it's insanely fast. Like I think it's faster than we can process ores. We're cl uh, we're kind of keeping up ish. Maybe, I don't know. I think we're going to backlog, but yeah, this is going to be limited. We don't need it to be that fast. 
Um, and these guys probably we also don't need them that fast because this is this is struggling to import. So let's try give it a limit of ten thousand and see if that keeps it up. We're gonna see. Still going pretty fast. I'm gonna leave it running for a little bit now. Uh, I mean, I have insane amounts of storage space, but this is still too fast. 5,000. Because I don't want to have more than one importer. It's pointless. If this is that fast, I don't really need it. Did I put 50,000? No, 5,000. Check. Okay. We'll see. This guy, I think, is keeping up. Yeah, this guy's fine. So that's okay. Only the botanical miner is super fast, apparently. Okay, 5,000 keeps up. That's okay, though, because uh, we're going to be getting everything, basically. Wheat, we're getting it. Potatoes, we should be getting them. And it's really neat. So if we want to run this at max speed, I currently changed it to 60,000 RF attack because of the limit of wither skeleton skulls that I can produce. I could get more spawners, which is what I did. I have two here now with 64 upgrades each inside of them. And I, and I have a different magnet and it's picking everything up. And I don't know if I can just sneak right click with it being in my baubles, but I don't know. Uh, so basically, the skulls are limited on that part. So what I want to do is I want to get a little bit of more of an income of power. So we have this now. These are Atheum solar cells in a tier 6 solar cell array, which we're going to move right now. I'm just going to vein mine all of this. And that, and that, and that, and that. And I believe it came over to this corner, so it would be that big. So we can just take all of this off, like so, on all four sides. And then if we move this guy, I believe, to this spot, because it has it has the blocks one block above. So this would be where the 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 structure frames would be. This would be where the solar cells would be, and that guy would come in one block lower. So like here would put that on top of this like so and then we can just right click to place it down this is how it now looks and i kind of like it how it slightly blends into the shape it's missing that little top part but we we don't really need to sort that out so it should be good uh what i want to do now though is i have a power monitor here and we need to to configure this inside of here basically what this power monitor does I, if it works the same way uh, also, I made a wireless charger so I don't have to manually charge my flux capacitor anymore, just so you know. Uh, and we can move this guy. Well, I don't know what the range is. But we could have it here, where it's kind of out of the way. And this flux point should give it power uh, enough, I guess. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, so we need this power monitor to be attached here and needs to have a conduit on the network, if I recall correctly, like so. And then it gives you an ability of emitting a signal when the storage is less than 75% full or whatever percentage you want it, and then stop emitting the signal when the storage gets full, basically. So what we can do is turn the nether star generator when this power storage gets lowered. So we can say, let's say, emit signal when storage is less than 75% full. So we're gonna grab a redstone receiver and a redstone transmitter and we're going to place a redstone transmitter on let's say here so that's going to be at a signal it's channel minus one so channel eight that's fine and then we go towards north here and i need my cow pet and my feed bag i think i have them in here or i put them in here pet cow and feed bag because I don't really need my night vision pet anymore, but this is gonna hurt. So we need to turn this guy to redstone on, and we're gonna put the wireless thingy here, uh, and flip it around with my wrench, like so, downwards. And then we say redstone. I think my power is gonna drain now because I need to add the thing to the thing. So we're gonna do redstone conduit here and redstone conduit here, and that's gonna output a signal. You had to wrench it to here, so we get an in and out, 
Oh, we don't need to rotate you. And that should be fine. And then we can go to here and grab a flux plug um, and say flux plug here and just select it to nether star power, but we'll make a new network saying solar power. And we're gonna set it to, let's say yellow for solar. We set this to solar power. We're gonna go down here, grab another flux point. And we can put this guy up here, let's say, uh, here, flux point. We're gonna select solar power and ignore limit and go up top as well. Oops, da, 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 to ignore the limit here as well. And that should make, uh, that's making 2.0 million. So I don't know if this is gonna work all the time or if it's gonna stop in the daytime. So we're gonna see that over time. But if it does work all the time here in the end, then we're just sorted. We're making insane amounts of RF and we don't really necessarily need nether stars. But we're gonna see. I'm gonna give it some time and see if my power storage starts draining. I'm gonna go to the overworld, see when it's daytime or nighttime. Well, actually we can see it just started to be daytime in the top right. So we're gonna see when it gets to nighttime if this starts draining. As you can see in the top right, it is currently nighttime, but the power does work during the night. I just wanna show you how the redstone's gonna work. So when this drops below 1.5 million, billion, whatever it is, uh, we're gonna see an influx of power, or we should at least. Yeah, there we go. And nether stars are kicking in. We're getting plus 66,000 RF a tick. I decided to move some things around. I removed six of the ore processors and we have three now in the middle that are fully upgraded and are handling all of the ores that we're getting from the void ore miner. And over here I moved my material stone art factories. And basically what happens is the same uh, stuff is being produced and I believe this middle pulverizer is now making me flint. And all of the rest of them are processing all of the ores and we are not having any backlog or anything. So that is fine. Everything is getting exported. And over here on this side, I have trimmed down things as well because we don't need that much stuff for processing uh, the platinum, nickel and iridium to get the platinum ingots or the fluid transposer to process the cinnabar. We don't need that many pulverizers to process redstone and black quartz. So also the redstone I'm not processing to get cinnabar because we have almost a full drawer of cinnabars that we don't need more because we're only using a little bit to process these ores. So that is fine. And what I set up here on this side is uh, an alloy smelter, a redstone furnace and a fluid transposer. Uh, this fluid transposer is actually the one that was here. I just moved it. And what you see here is uh, phantom faces from actual editions, which are amazing blocks. Uh, what they do basically is you can connect them with this phantom connector. And basically this block acts as this fluid transposer. So let's say I want black concrete, which is what I taught it again to make. Let's say we want a stack. This thing is making black concrete, but there is no crafter behind it. So the crafter is working from here and it's detecting this phantom face. And I'm gonna show you how to set us up. We're gonna set up this license place to make us the Z-Logic controller and skeleton contractor if we ever need them. And the machine can work for that. So we're gonna put three crafters like so. We're gonna grab some cable and we're just gonna put the cable right here and that should power all of them. We don't need anything else, I don't think so. So we're gonna put these guys in the bottom one here. I'll grab the phantom faces. I'm gonna put three of them here and we can have two more machines for processing whatever we want. I don't really know what machines we're gonna need but I'll probably get to something. So what you do is take the phantom connector, you sneak right click on the block you want to connect and then you right click the phantom face or sneak right click, sorry. And you can see the connection is fine and working and they have a certain range you also have phantom boosters, which I have here, which you place on top of them and it increases the range. I have, I don't know what the default range is, but that doesn't matter. Uh, this guy can have, if we need to, we can put up an exporter on the side to export uh, an ax and shears because they will run out of their ability at some point, but I don't think we need to because we're not gonna be making that much stuff in here. The things that we can make is just like six different stuff and we only need the skeletal contractor and the 
the Z Logic controller. So I believe now uh, everything is set up. It, the extract is set. So if I request, uh, t -t -t I'm stuck. Uh, the Z Logic, or I'll say controller, because that will find it. Z Logic controller. Let's say we want ten of these, and magically, it works. It's making cool noises. Oh, that's neat. That is that is really cool. Making the green particles like it's squeezing the zombie things out. Um, and we have a really fast capacitor here, so this works really nicely, and yeah, that is really cool. I also added the covers for the sides, and I changed the redstone furnace for this uh, extra utilities furnace with 64 super duper speed upgrades. And if I, for example, request nether brick, which I have set here, let's just request something that we can see. That's 512, let's see. That's the speed. It's nuts. The crafter can put uh, in items fast enough for the furnace not to smelt him uh, before that, so we, we don't get a, a bottleneck with the crafter, basically. And over here on this side, I added a pulverizer, and this guy has uh, a recipe for making crushed lapis. So we can make machine casings now, which I have 128 of here. Uh, and I also added in the alloy smelter some recipes for floral, no, for organic green dye with floral green powder, slime balls, and pulverized coal, and the same for uh, the organic black dye, which is pulverized coal and slime balls, which is nice. Uh, and here I just have a green lamp f uh, filler spot for another machine that we may need for a crafter, so when we get to that, I'll add that. But for that, uh, I think we're good with all of the ore processing, resource gathering, and all that, and we can, in the next episodes, probably focus more on magic -y mods. I want to go to uh, this forest here, and I want to build a, um, not necessarily here, but this is a really good chunk that we might have used a little bit, but in one in one of the here, uh, here spots in this forest, I want to build like a Thomcrafty building of some kind. I have no idea what uh, I want yet. I'm probably gonna start planning out and maybe designing a little bit uh, in between episodes here on what I, how I want it to look. Possibly here on this chunk, maybe. We have this nice little hilly part. I might go find another magical forest with more like hills or something that we want. I don't know. Like I have no idea. So that is the plan. And then for other magic mods, uh, if I go back here, for blood magic, we are going to need... Uh, just to create an altar and then probably a villager spawner putting villagers there or maybe a witch spawner. I'm gonna see if that still works, if the witches keep dying or if they don't, I don't know. But possibly villagers at first, we'll see. Uh, maybe I'll look into something else, but generally you need a spawner. And for Botania, we have all of the mystical flowery bits, I think over here. So we don't need to farm those, we have 12,000 of each of them, which is nuts. So that's good. We can just jump into that, start making our magical wood, and we can automate everything with like refined storage and stuff. We're just gonna basically run cabling all the way down over there through these chunks. I don't know if I have to load everything. Like I'm gonna see if uh, I am, if I leave and the chunks, for example, uh, in the straight part in the map if I open it. So basically if I load, let's say, uh, I can show it to you on here. Uh, if I load, if I don't load, let's say these chunks, uh, if the cable is gonna work, but if not, I'll just load the chunks and we can just load a three by three here, probably, maybe that much, uh, and then that much, um, possibly. I don't know if we're gonna set anything in like this little edge of here. But yeah, I'm already chunk loading the spawners which are there, but yeah, that's gonna be good. So with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. I am hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, you should hit the like button. Consider subscribing to some new videos, and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.